welcome back to my channel web and apps with it so in my last video about react js i had explained how to install react how to start a react application and how to run a very first program that's a hello world today we'll be exploring more in react js using component so let's get started all right so i am here into my folder which is hello world which was created in my last video inside public i have index.html file that is the page that gets displayed on the server when I start my server. In src folder, I have index.js file. That's the main file where I'll be doing all the coding. So currently my index.js file is open. But before that, I'll just start my application. That's my server to be started. So to start the server, I need to write npm start. To terminate the server, or to terminate the development which is going on, you have to just do Control plus C. And it will ask you, do you want to terminate the bad job? You have to just give yes and your command prompt will be back. So I'll be writing npm start. So it's saying hello world at so and so react script is starting up. So it will just go to the development server and my page will load by then. Okay, my server is up and it's loaded fully. So let's start with the coding part of it. So as I said, I'll be covering component section into it. So currently I'll be reading, uh, so currently I'll be requiring only React from React, React DOM from React DOM. I won't be requiring my index app and this particular thing right now because I won't be doing any coding over there. Plus I'll be requiring React DOM because as we know in React, everything goes through the render function. So whenever we have to return something onto the screen, it is inside the render function that we have to write. It. So we need to have our React render function in place. So we'll be just keeping this as it is, but we'll be doing some changes inside it. So currently I have made it blank with by writing import React from React and import React DOM from React DOM. We have the render function that will help us to return the data that I want on my screen. Now let's create a function or a component to be called as. So for example, if I say function, this is a syntax. You need to write function followed by the name of the function. So if I say hello as my function name, whenever we declare a function, we know we have to pass on some object values for it. So that's why we have this rounded bracket. Then we have to start off with our curly braces as we need to declare what exactly you want it to be displayed over there. So I am going to write my return function over here and I'm just going to call my return function into my render method. So I'm writing return. So as we know uh, in React that we need to have HTML inside JavaScript. So we started off with the function that is in the JavaScript format. We are writing return. Now we are going to write HTML that has to be displayed on the screen. So I, for example, write hello world to be displayed on my screen. And it is inside the H4 tag. And it has to be completed with the JavaScript. So it's JavaScript starting. In middle is the HTML and ending is with the JavaScript. So that's what React follows as JXX javascript syntax now we have declared a function we have returned a return variable also but how do this return will come we need to pass on this particular hello over here so we'll be writing hello over here so we have render with the hello that's the function method and we have document dot get element by id as we know in javascript all the values are pulled using the id so here we have get element dot id root now you might be thinking where is this root we have not returned it but if you go to index dot html you can see div id is equal to root since this is the main page that loads when we run the server so div id is equal to root, it is going to fetch the value over here and it will display. Second important thing to be remembered is we have to write this capital and we need to write that method over here in the angular bracket with a closing. 
in react every tag that you write whether you declare your own tags like xml that's why i said it is following jsx that is java script xml so it has the compatibility to work as javascript along with xml so in xml we know that we can declare our own tags while in javascript we have to be following the syntax properly so here we are following the syntax that we are writing the return method and we are closing it with a semicolon here we are following the xml that any tag can be there and in xml we know we define our own tag then we need to close it so as per HTML5, you have a pattern, then you can close it here itself if you don't have anything to be passed in between. So you are writing hello and you're closing your hello itself. So document.getElement. So this hello will get the data from the function hello and it will display that onto the screen for us. So let's save this and let's see what's the page going to display on my screen. So it's compiling. So once this has compiled, it will change to what exactly we want the value to be displayed onto our screen. Okay, so here it is. It is refreshed by itself and you can see hello world is getting displayed because I have told it to display inside H4. To know the difference, we can just change this to H1. As we know in HTML, H1 is the highest heading tag. So let's save this again. And we go here, we can see hello world has changed its shape. So whatever we are saving here is getting reflected onto my main page. So this is how a simple component can be created. Stateless components and nested components. So in a stateless component, we have to create a react.create element. So to create that element, we need to write a specific line of code. So we'll be doing an implicit intent over there. So just to see what's the difference between it, I'll be just commenting this section so that we can find out what is the difference that we can see as per the normal function and as per the stateless function. So we are working on stateless component. So in the stateless component, the format for it is to write is we have to write a constant then we need to write the name of the variable that you want to. So as I had used up, I'll be using the same thing that is hello. Equal to, not an explicit, but an implicit pattern. Const hello equal to the open bracket. This open bracket stands for properties. We'll be moving out to properties once we have completed with the components. Const hello equal to implicit intent you are using a return function inside it. As we know, we have to have something as a return to display on the screen. So return will be doing react.createElement. So react.createElement. For that, we need to pass on the tag that you want for the data to be displayed. So as you see, we had selected up H4. So I'll pass H4 again here. Yeah followed by a comma, followed by the values to be printed inside it. That's the properties that you have to pass, comma, and the text that you want. So if I want hello world on my screen and with a semicolon. So this is the only line of change that we are trying to do. Over here in the stateless component, we are writing a constant as hello and I'm doing an implicit intent. In implicit intent, I am just writing the return function again. Only thing is this value, which was directly coming, I am just creating an element for the same. And then I am doing h4, hello world. And my document.getElement by ID remains the same. So let's save this and run to see what is the data that I'm getting. So I've got hello world again. So here I had put capital, here I have put small. So you can see my data has come. There's the same output it is giving, but it's only a stateless component where I am not declaring a function and in that I am passing the value. I am creating a constant and inside that I am passing a react element. So if you hover over here, you can see function.react.createElement needs an empty set of prop data. Then it needs the HTML element that you wanted to pass. 
and then you need to find out what exactly is the value that you need to pass. So that's what I've written. The tag that I want the HTML tag, the curly braces and the word that I wanted to display inside as an output. So that's what how is my stateless component working. Now let's move ahead with the nested component. So when we talk about nested component, so I'll just remove the stateless component out now and we go back to the normal function. We have written already h tag, but we know we always use multiple tags together. So if I want to do the same, I can write here a div tag where any tag can be returned inside a div tag. So I just use a div tag along with my h4 tag. So I have made a div tag inside which I have h4 tag in which I'll be writing my hello. Okay, so I have written here a function hello inside which I have passed a return function. Inside that I have added one tag that is a div inside which I have an h4 hello world tag and I have closing div. So this is a method of nested tagging, right? So we are using nested method to display. Now, when I run this particular program, I can see hello world on my screen coming up inside H4 with the dev tag. Now, if I want to write somewhat like an UL tag, I write an UL tag and inside that I use an li tag and I mention web and apps. And I just try to save this and I run it. So I can see hello world with web and apps coming into the picture. So when I am using inside nested tag, I don't need to put a semicolon. We are just following the normal HTML syntax, which is it. Only thing is we are having one as the root element and all the others are nested inside it. So for example, if I want to close this div and I start another div, you can see the tag is added, but there is entire code which is not going to work. There are errors that has prompted because you can have only one root element, which is either a div or any tag that you want. There can be only one. If you want to use one more div, you can nest it inside and use it. That is applicable. But your main div, which is closing, you cannot use another div after that. So this is actually the format of XML. In XML, we know whatever tag we declare as the first, that's the tag that we have to close first. Like even in HTML, we write HTML as a first tag and we close that as HTML tag. We don't have any other tags coming in between, which is an HTML. Same way in XML, whenever you write, a, if you're making an Excel of books, about XML about book and that's your main tag you will have book closing at the end and in between you can have other tags as well right so you can have multiples of sub tags you can have one tag as books as well but this main has to close at the end you can close it in between and you start another book tag that is not possible so your main tag should have a closing till the end so that's what is the rule of XML along with JavaScript that has to be followed. So when I've written multiples inside it, I got the same format as I got the output on my screen as I get a normal HTML on my screen. Only thing is we need to write a return method and we need to do a render method. So this is about nested tag. Now the same nested tags can be taken ahead with nested components. We have to write a constant method as we saw with the constant how to do. So I am having currently this two tags over here, which is my H4 and my P tag. I need to declare a variable for the same. So if I give constant to welcome equal to the method was rounded bracket followed by implicit. In. So you will be passing that data over here with a semicolon. So when I am writing constant welcome hello world over here, it is giving me a warning because this method is not calling my welcome. So I need to go into my return function and I need to write a div tag which is there inside that if I want it to be displayed. So I have given the name as welcome. So I'll write welcome with a closing. So you can see hello world has come inside my h4. Just to make that difference appear, I can just give h1 and here also an h1. So I'll just save and now you can see 
hello world which is from the welcome tag that is my constant and this method is getting called over here so it is displaying both the things together my components as well as in the nested format as well so my stateless components along with my nested components are working over here remove these two data out and if i give one more constant like i give it as abc equal to something implicit intent and i give it as a paragraph tag welcome okay and i just need to go and write here abc okay you can see i have written your abc but this color has not changed because of the value that i pass abc is declared but its value is never used because a variable always has to be in capital and where you are initiating that that also has to be capital so this is the color combo that has to come that is yellow color with the green color if this is what is coming then your data is getting displayed properly so i'm calling in my random method the same hello hello so hello is getting called over here as well and my welcome and abc variable is having whatever data that will get displayed on my screen so it was hello world and welcome so my data is coming and getting displayed on my screen for the same. this is what is all about nested components and stateless components hope you liked my video so that's all in this video about nested components and stateless components thank you for watching do like share comment and subscribe to my channel